you're new here, hello, welcome, welcome. We are, today is the start of, and I'm, it's going to take me a couple of minutes in here to kind of tell you what's going to be going on over the next eight weeks, and then we'll get down to uh, episode one. This uh, series is called Furniture Painting 101, and today's episode one is, got all my notes here, um, prep before the prep, choosing a style, theme, and colors, and designing and envisioning the piece, and then an overview of what to expect over the next few weeks. And episode two, okay. next week we will be um, discussing finding and choosing your pieces, whether they're for fun, profit, or um, style. Each of these is, is not just for people who want to do this for a living like I do. It's also for people who want to do pieces for themselves and pieces for their family or as a hobby or as a side gig, which whatever it's going to be, there's going to be details in each one for you. So next week, we're going to be finding and choosing pieces. Week three, prep and tools of the trade. We'll talk about you know, the things that need to be in your arsenal to get you good and started. Not everything you'll ever need, but the basics. And week four, we'll talk about paint and what kind. And in the meantime, I am trying all kinds of new ones that I haven't tried before. And I will be reviewing all of these on the YouTube channel. This is Heirloom Traditions. I have Jolie on the way here. This one is Farmhouse paint company we have the new magical chalk paint from paint pixie along with the regulars that i use diy silk dixie bell so we'll go over paints in different styles the 101s versus the clay paints versus the chalk paints and uh help you with decision making on those and week five, or episode five, will be the decor and how much of it to add, what you can add. It's, um, I mean, you can add a lot if you want, but we're talking about transfers and molds and wood embellishments and uh, blending and all the other things that you can do to create a more beautiful finish. And in episode six, Finishing best practice practices, and we'll be talking about polyurethane, water-based poly, uh, DIY big top, wax, colored wax, glazes, uh, Dixie Bell clear coat, uh, spray finishes. We'll we'll go over a uh, hemp oil. We'll go over all of those. And episode seven is for shipping or delivering or shipping and or are or delivering your pieces and where to sell if you're interested in selling and we'll talk about etsy and websites and facebook and uh our facebook marketplace your website vendor malls all the all the different options that we have there we'll go over those and then i'm totally out of line i don't think i did this uh Episode two is finding and choosing your piece, fun, profit, and style. Moving out of the overview and into episode one, we're going to be talking about style. And that can be the style or the period or the era of the furniture, the style of the finish that you want to put on that, the things that are complementary. I mean, if you get a an old craftsman style piece, that lends itself to easily being flipped into um, a farmhouse piece and boom, slap some white on it, slap some black on it, and, and there it goes out the door. Just because it is uh, a farmhouse looking piece doesn't mean you can't put a, an industrial metal looking, rusty looking finish on there and have it be one of those shockworthy statement pieces. You absolutely can do that. But so the first thing in, in determining or, or thinking about it before you get, you know, the prep before the prep is your furniture piece. And we're going to talk about choosing that. But in, in this episode, let's just say you have one. You can let it dictate by what it looks like. It's It looks old and traditional so let's use neutral muted colors or you know i i've been known to put a landscape on one and 
in orange and pink. <laughs> you can do whatever whatever you want, but that that's where you decide. So, in the different styles, and this is in no way um, a complete list, but some that I jotted down that are very popular right now are farmhouse, boho, industrial, traditional, rustic, distressed, and shabby chic. Those are some main ones, and it doesn't have to stay in one of those. I mean, you can't just go off the wall too crazy um, and expect it to sell, but you can sort of look at look at the piece and say, okay, I see this as farmhouse, then by all means, just run with that. But if you look at it and say, oh, I can just see this in some, you know, romantic romantic young girl's house or some sweet old lady who gardens house. I can envision who this end user is and they would want it to be sort of shabby chic, painted in a pale yellow or a pale pink or, or white with some flowers on it that still looks traditional but looks special. Or you can, can decide that you really want to do a piece that's distressed and you can lightly distress with a, a, you know, a piece of sandpaper, or maybe a 200 grit, or you can hit it with your sander and, and do one of the pieces that has uh, big chunks of paint all throughout it. That's not my style, but a lot of people make a lot of money and just love that stuff. So stare at your piece a minute. I mean, it, you know, you may know right off the bat and run with it, or you may have to go through these other steps to envision what you want your final outcome to be. The, the one main thing that I think is important to remember when, when you started in the way that my method works is, um, who is it for? I envision the end customer, the person that it's for, and what they want for the piece. Are they just wanting something to go in their living room to put their TV on and the rest of their house is farmhouse, so they're looking for a farmhouse piece? Lots and lots and lots of those customers, lots of traditional customers. Or maybe all of their furniture in their home, the person that you're envisioning, is already traditional, but they want one pop of color. They want one thing in their a living room, that's what we were talking about, that is a statement piece. So look at it and think, okay, is this a 20-something newlywed who doesn't have a, a whole lot of money but wants things to be trendy and cute? Is it uh, an older person who likes a little bit more color, doesn't want it too traditional, but doesn't want it out of the ballpark? Really? concentrate and hone in on that and, and here's a little something that I've noticed that's a little bit crazy um, I guess the older that we get the less bright and vivid things are because our eyes go a little bit downhill or uh, and old women like red that's what I'm trying to spit out have you noticed somebody tell me here if you've noticed this but the a lot of women by the time they hit the mid, mid 60s they're wanting to paint their their cabinets and a lot of times they're painting them red they're getting new pots and pans they're getting a new blouse and they're wanting red you can't fill your house with red furniture but you can have one red statement piece that you love so when you think about a bold shocking color like that it doesn't have to be for the hippie boho soul it can be for the older more mature person too depending on what you do with your with your next steps and the industrial look, if you have something that has, you know, hard edges and it would just lean itself toward industrial, absolutely that kind of thing sells, especially in the cities where more people are, you know, having warehouse apartments and things like that. And single men, uh, there's, you know, there's, there's a, a call for it. Rustic is still really big right now, but here's here's another tip. Hey, tip time. And the next tip is but, um, mid-century modern, I hear, and I love it, is taking over farmhouse a little bit. So if you see some of the clean, simple line pieces and they want geometric shapes on it. So we'll keep that in our arsenal too. That's not my thing. 
I'll say that and then I'll do 15 pieces of it, but I'm not painting them for me. I guess that's what I'm trying to spit out right here is think about who you want your end user to be and have a good time painting it. It doesn't have to be uh, stressful. So look at your piece and you can go the easy way. This looks farmhouse, boom, paint it farmhouse, boom, sell it. Or man, I really want to do an industrial piece. Here's this mid-century modern. It looks all these square, clean lines. I want to do something funky town on that. You're going to get a buyer. It's going to happen. Maybe not in your hometown. And we'll talk about that, about using Etsy and shipping and all that later. But you can do any of that. So you have to make that decision in, in the beginning. And you can go with a theme. And we've kind of talked about that in there already, about whether it's going to be a statement piece, whether it's going to be a piece that just fits in um, a more traditional home. Or you can go with specifics here. You can create a piece for people who love sunflowers and there's lots of them people love sunflowers or chickens or roses or you know people whose favorite color is purple you hey guilty you can uh think of what kind of theme you want and the style and the theme are sort of intermeshed the the boho theme of the jewel tone colors and multiple colors and not as much blending, but a little more specific colors here and there. Those fall into the theme as well. And just like we talked about before, your end user. Who is going to have this piece of furniture in their house? Um, is it going to be you? You can do anything you want. And then if you don't like it, you can change it when you're done. For your family member, same thing. I know that my oldest daughter's favorite color is green. I know my middle daughter loves teal. I know that my daughter-in-law loves slightly distressed off-white, almost farmhouse feel, but with just a little bit more personality than that. Or you can think about, uh, that's your demographic. The demographic, the age, the style, the likes, the wants, the needs of the person that you're doing it for. And you can... If you're creating something for a specific customer, say the industrial piece, there's a very small percentage of people who want industrial pieces, but they can't find them whenever they do. Um, so you would be filling a niche. Um, or go with what's trending, which is still farmhouse right now, but also mid-century modern, and those have a higher percentage of people demographic people crossing over age categories who are looking for those pieces so those are more trending and that's where you're going to think about your um, Pantone color of the year and things like that so really hone down and that's almost more important than your piece is who who is this going to belong to make her up in your head and try to please her <laughs> that's the way I do it Okay, then you come down to your colors, and when you're deciding your colors, each paint brand has one of these color charts. And if you're thinking right off of the bat blue, it's good to have all these color charts, and you can have the DIY one and the Dixie Belle one and the Farmhouse one all laying side by side, and look at all the blues until the one that you're envisioning pops out. Just know that the color charts are never 100%. What you see online is even a, a less resemblance, but it's as close as modern man can get it. So use all of the tools that you have in your arsenal whenever you think to have decided on blue to pick what shade of blue that, that you're envisioning. If you want your piece to sell quick, right now, you would paint it white. You would paint it gray, any shade of gray, light gray, dark gray, medium gray, brownish gray, bluish gray, purplish gray. Gray is still in. Um, black or blue. Um, most of the blues are still in. Those are for a quick sale. Those are the ones that, that you're going to paint it, list it on Marketplace, put it in a vendor mall, and two weeks later it's going to be gone. We all need those. If you're in doing this as a side hustle or a business, you need those quick sales. You can't just do, you can, I guess, but you, 
I can't just do um, one of my conversation pieces and statement pieces because you, these are your bread and butter. You need to get a few of these pieces of furniture out of, your, out of your way and make a little cash to pay for the fun you're having in the future. If you want to have an easy sale, I found teal and the Pantone color of the year when they announce it like the like right now they're they've already announced a sort of a mint green and a periwinkle this year and if you watch and that really catches on then the rugs are going to be that color and the shower curtains are going to be that color people's clothes are going to be that color and then you can see what's really trending in your area but you don't have to focus on just your area because when you're selling online I sell more furniture that gets shipped to other states than I do in my area of Louisiana because of the style that I like to paint. But those things are, are what's trending and what's going to be po uh, popular. Those are your easy sales. They're not your quick sales. Maybe this piece will sit there and 15 people will like it, but nobody has a need for it. And it may take you a month or two to sell it, but it's going to sell and lots of people will like it. Then you have the longer wait, and those are for the statement pieces or conversation pieces. That's your boho, your industrial, your highly distressed, your uh, multicolor, bright colors, your purples, your ones with the bright metallics and golds and bright pinks and things like that. Those are what I consider to be high-end pieces um artistic pieces you're you know you're using that furniture as your canvas and you are creating your heart out and you are having a good time at it and and this thing is going to speak to you and to a handful of other people when it's done like no other they're going to think they have found the golden ticket from Willy Wonka when they run across your piece they're going to think they've been looking their whole life for it and can't live without it that's a limited customer base. It's not an impossible customer base, but you may get discouraged at month four whenever it's going to take six months to sell that thing. But the, the difference is, say you have a, a small buffet that would sell for, depending on your area of the country, paint it white or black or blue, traditional looking, just middle of the road, simple. Maybe put a, uh, maybe blend the paint or put a transfer on it, and it's it's beautiful. And I lost my train of thought. That's gonna probably sell for if it's plain, three ninety nine to four ninety nine in my area. And if you put the transfer on it and you do some blending and you do just a wonderful professional job, and the piece doesn't have any defects in the veneer or in the drawer mechanisms and it's it's a overall good piece probably $7.99 or $8.99 if you're lucky and it's going to take you a little while longer to find the perfect customer to buy that but when you do one of the high-end artistic pieces that's going to take you six months to sell you're going to get $1,500 to two grand for it so it's like you're making an interest on it every single month while you're waiting on it to sell it's definitely still worth it and people will pay this is crazy and we'll go into this more when we're talking about the uh the shipping but people i've had people pay five six seven hundred dollars for shipping the people who love that piece you're not losing anything on the shipping um, you're getting your art into a home of someone who's going to love and cherish it and pass it down through their, through their family. So it's definitely worth that to me. And that's why those are the pieces that have my heart, but the more traditional pieces that I hardly do any that are quick sale pieces. Sometimes I do, but I do easy sale pieces. And then I do the high end artistic pieces and sometimes I just need to flip one. So, I, you know, I'll do the quick sale piece. But that is that is it for the prep before the prep. That's just saying, look at your piece. Decide who you're painting it for. Decide what direction it leads you uh, or your customer 
base once and let it lead you there and then decide, am I going to just paint it? Am I going to distress it, paint it and blend it, paint it and add embellishments? And there's so many things that you can, can do in the embellishing and we'll talk about that later as well. But I hope you've enjoyed that. Remember to um, share this if you have other friends who are who are interested in furniture painting or maybe in the furniture, uh, wanting to get into furniture flipping or do it as, as a hobby or a little side income. This will be, you know, very interesting. We will have the uh, free ebook at the end for the ones who um, send the email addresses. I'll have a link set up for that. Finding and choosing pieces for fun, for profit, and for style. The pieces you choose will vary depending on which of those directions that you want to go. So, see you here next week for that. I appreciate you, and I'm so glad you're here. Bye.